Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 456. Uh, it's, it's got a ring to it, uh, David, 456. Um, it has, yes. <laughs> with us tonight, we have um, uh, Masataki Wasa, uh, Tim Kappa, and David Razan. Um, uh, each week, we, we meet here to uh, uh, review the. Excuse me. <laughs> Damn it. I didn't mean to do that. Um, each week, we. we um, Review the questions and uh, the answers given on, on, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, David is uh, a leading uh, internet marketer. He uh, is based in the sunny south of the UK and uh, somewhere near uh, Brighton um, in West Sussex. You can also find David. Uh, at uh, chameleonmarketing.com. No, it's not. No, davidrazam.com. That will, that will do. Yeah. I've yeah. never put a website on chameleonmarketing.com. Okay. <laughs> maybe I should. May yeah. Maybe I should say, go and have a look at davidrosen.com because uh, Jim Monroe sent you here uh, by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim uh, is based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim is a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. And Masataki Wasa is based in Wimbledon. Um, he uh, uh, is also a Google product expert in the, uh, excuse me, <laughs> in the um, AdSense community. Let's get to it. Let Tim talk instead of me. This one is from Steve Brown. It's titled HTML table versus a table as image. Um, Steve Brown goes on to say, hi, if I make a table of data in Excel and then crop it and insert it into an article as an image, um, will that be detrimental for SEO um, compared with using a WordPress table plugin? Yeah, well, as Michael says, uh, as, well, firstly, it's not detrimental. It depends what you want to achieve. But <coughs> an image is an image. <coughs> uh, a table is going to be indexed. Uh, in fact, depending on how you structure that table, you may even get a featured snippet of the data underneath the actual um, <clears throat> index in, in search results. So I would go with a table. You don't need to use a plugin. You can literally, you said WordPress, so you just switch it to the uh, visual, like literally copy and paste it into the visual, and then switch back to the HTML, and you can tidy up the size in the HTML. Or another thing you can do is if this is going to change over time, you can do the table in um, Google Docs. You can actually then share that public and then embed that Google Doc, which you could update by just updating the doc when things update or if you keep adding to it, and that will update live. So, yeah, there's plenty of options. Trust that way from plugins. Thank you, Tim. I, I would use a table in most cases for two reasons. First, accessibility. If information in the table is important, it ought to be accessible for those who are visually impaired. Second point is if you use an image, does that image look good across different screens? You know, it might look good on desktop, but it might be too small to look in a mobile device and people have to pinch and expand, for instance. That's not a good user experience. So if possible, I would use a table in most instances. I wonder, I'm not sure about this, but um, I wonder if there's a block in uh, 
WordPress these days for tables, so you wouldn't need a plugin anyway. There's a block for just about everything you can think of these days. Um, I'd have a look there. That might help you out. <coughs> thank, thank you, David. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, let's uh, roll along towards number two. Sharia Shah asked a question titled uh, Keyword Research or Competitor Analysis. Um, what is the first thing you do before starting uh, an SEO campaign? Keyword Research or Competitor Analysis? Uh, yeah, I audit the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the website and make sure it's working properly um because whatever you do content wise if the uh if the website is is a bit dicky um it's lower to bugger up what you do um with these but the answer to this question from my point of view is i do both um they 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 are the two things that i do before i start working on content Excellent. yeah and, and naturally, working on the actual site, uh, you know, you're going to see the gaps. Like, I wouldn't just jump, like, without understanding the actual site itself, its structure, it's, you know, like running off and just doing keyword research and then competitor analysis. It's a little bit, like, weird to me. I would be diving into the site first, what it's built out of, how it's structured, where is its limitations, what's letting it down, right? Then, then you can start looking at the other stuff, like, you know, yeah. Um, because without that, like, if it's got major limitations and it's just built in something that is absolutely whatever i don't know like there's no point spending two days on competitive analysis or keyword research when nothing of that could be you know shoehorned into the current site or just wouldn't make sense like yeah spend some time on the actual site understand it understand the business um what's its limitations what's the current structure can you change that current structure? Do they have on-site developers? And is it workable? Like, and secondly, does the client want that? Like, you know what I mean? You, sh you should really be focused on that business first and foremost and understanding it before just running off and doing keyword research. And I know I'm obviously sim simplifying your question, but I just want you to start thinking about the clients and the client's needs rather than just saying hey i'll do five keywords for you okay very good advice all right let's move on to number three on our room list it's going from all of that you're sounding very very deep and sexy this week may i say uh, yeah it's it's um, not COVID, it, but it's um something close to it it's uh, it's a flu that, uh, we, we, I mean, we've got so much rain here that, that it rains six days a week and then drips off the trees for the rest. Um, and everybody has uh, got this um, flu. Uh, I mean, you're all sinking into the swamp, are you? <clears throat> let me tell you that the weather is so bad here in Australia that people are considering going to the UK for a holiday. Well, yeah, I, I, I can recommend it. It's, it's, uh, it's a good place, is the UK. Uh, no, no swamps at all. <laughs> so, so, so basically, all of you have got like, um, like trench foot, but like bodily foot. You like, you literally all just fungus ridden. <laughs> trench body i think is what you're trying to say <laughs> yeah trench body <laughs> well, you dirty dirty buckers What's anyway I'll, I'll let you get on with it yeah, yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Anyway, Oliver Harrison, he he, he said, "Hey, beautiful people." Uh, he said, "I'm really struggling to implement uh, topic cluster strategy." What? Um, he said, "My blog structure is that the uh, home page lists all the articles, and then these articles are sorted by categories in the main navigation menu of the blog." I understand that a topic cluster consists of three elements. One, a pillar slash hub page, two cluster pages, and three internal links. How do I implement that strategy on my blog? You know, what should I consider as the hub slash pillar page? I am confused if you Oh are. my lord, oh my lord, oh my lord. Okay, right, let's simplify this. Right. So you are a um, chiropractor, right? And your one of your services is dealing with or fixing plantar fasci fasciitis. Okay, so that's your main top level page on site. <coughs> so oops, okay, so that then you go to your blog, and now we're going to do let's say five articles. We're going to do um what is plantar fasciitis then you're going to do another one for um treatments symptoms and treatments or no treatments or symptoms and treatments of uh, plantar fasciitis then you're going to do one with um, exercises you can do at home for plantar fasciitis then you're going to do one for um local treatment centers in xyz county for plantar fasciitis and then you're going to do one for is plantar fasciitis and xyz like what are the differences like what you know what are the pick, pick the nearest one where people get confused so now you've got five those are published all five of those essentially are going to link to one another in like i don't know whether you have like michael said <coughs> a related post plugin all five of those will be clustered together because they will be interlinked and all five of them somewhere in there will have one thing about plantar fasciitis and it will interlink to that of course in the article if it mentions something else about <coughs> uh, i don't know um chiropractor clinic you can always link to the actual clinic page but that's if it's in in the in there like you don't have to go mental but that's essentially it so you're going to have create information around that topic and then that is going to be for your main actual page or and additionally depending on how shit hot this is you can actually embed that you can actually put that, you know, depending on what the skills are like, you can actually put that at the bottom of your main page saying, um, would you, you know, would you find out more about this? Um, I don't even know if you'd call it, what is it? Is it just a symptom, a treatment, a disease? Fuck knows. You would put, you, you know, depending, you could actually put that in nice little blocks underneath your main treatment page so that the user who thinks he may, he or she may not have it can actually read about it. But then again, you're answering questions, you're providing information to a person who may or may not realize that they have this, but are like going, um, you know, like why why can't I walk on my foot? What's going on? And things like this. You're going to then help them understand it, answer the question, do a basic diagnosis online, um, and you know slowly push them through to your actual service page like hey we can help you so yeah like in a nutshell that's that uh, i think you're totally overthinking this kind of stuff um but that's me thank you for all of that valuable knowledge tim thank you any more yeah, well, David, David, David's the writer here. David's the the, the cluster pillar, yeah. cluster pillar dude. <laughs> um, yeah, topic clusters. Yeah, it, it's 
I must say, I, I have used um, topic cluster tools, some of the free ones. There, there's one that's very good, but don't ask me what it is offhand. Uh, there are several. Um, it's fairly obvious if you Google them which one is is sensible and which one isn't uh, and isn't academic or just completely stupid. Um, it does help you sort out if you if you've gone down the road of big um, uh, key phrase research and you've got hundreds or thousands even of uh, of key key phrases. It does help you group them, um, but in terms of execution um what tim says basically um i i'm whenever i see the word pillar uh with seo i start getting the shakes you possibly saw me having the shakes a little bit earlier on uh, from well, the, the, the of, word yeah a, um a lot of it's one of these it's one of these yosty things that uh, come along and mess up your day um switch it off if you can in yoast and forget about it um, and go about it in a a user-centric way make sure that you've um that what what you've ended up with makes sense um rather than trying to implement this this and this you know get your get your copy on on the pay on the page on the site and um once you've published it have a look. Have you got any internal links you can build to to help people arriving at that page? You know, is it th this is your your wonderful how to how to hop on one foot if you have plant fasciitis fasciitis. Um, your links to the uh, cure for plant fasciitis um, page. So you know, get get your get your um if you've got lots of key phrases if you've gone down that that route you can use a tool and it'll help help or help group them um it'll give you some ideas for themes for your uh for your content if you're unsure about it um or you can match up your thoughts about content with groups of key phrases that that you can use in that that uh, that piece um and then Structure your site that, in a way that makes sense, and then have a look for internal links once you've got a bit of content up. Thank you, David. Simple, really? I hope. Thank you. Any more? All right, uh, let's roll on to number four on our run list. Um, this is from Mohammed Atha. Uh, it's titled Strategies for Bing, and Mohammed goes on to say, I was checking Bing webmasters lately. And it looks like there is a significant increase in clicks and overall traffic. I have around 30k average views from Bing slash Yahoo slash Microsoft alone. Uh, I, I'm planning to work on Bing keywords at, at least 10% of the total. Uh, is anyone seeing similar stats? Uh, are you guys planning to follow some strategies for Bing? Uh, well, I'm not necessarily seeing similar stats. Um, <coughs> I, <coughs> there is one, <coughs> one client I specifically target uh, Bing for. Uh, because it's the age demographic. Age demographic of Bing is literally in sort of the, or, uh, I'm going to say 45 to 65 age bracket. Um, and that's the target, target demographic for this client. Um, and it works, you know, it just gets better conversions. Um, it's seen more. Um, yeah, so, you know, what what works for you um yeah so for this particular client that's a, that's where we look um and yeah it works makes sense yeah i i've got um one maybe two clients where there's uh evidence that the engagement from being is probably about twice as much 
twice as much time, twice as much, twice as many pages uh, as from Google. Um, there are very few of these um, uh, of these from Bing. Um, so part of me says, um, is it statistically significant? Um, I'm very rusty on uh, stats. I did lots of stats at university, but um, as as for looking at things and making a judgment, I God knows. Um, anyway, so there there is the question here of is it a good idea to try and get more of them? Well, it probably is. Um, I haven't got round to doing that yet. It's just something I've noticed recently. You know, it's there and it, it's um, it's big enough to make me think. Yes, this is this is very interesting. Thank you, David. Thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, look at number five. Brett Nelson asked the question: Is total competitive analysis? Um, Brett said, hello, I've been tasked with uncovering um, a competitor site's backlinking and internal linking strategies. For bank link, backlinking, I've been using Ahrefs, and for internal linking, I've been using Screaming Frog. Uh, however, I'm struggling to find key exact takeaways. Uh, does anyone have a recommendation around how I can uh, do this better? Um, this uh, competitive analysis. Well, the the tools, you know, the Ahrefs, the the Semrushes, etc., will give you loads of data about um, about backlinks. Um, if you're that bothered about them, if you're going to do a um, a linking strategy, which is generally something that that we round here don't uh, don't put it at the top of our priorities. Um, I'm not sure I would be that bothered about what um, a competitor is doing internal linking wise. Um, I'd be spending my time working out what uh, links I can do on um, on the client site or my site, uh, depending on uh, whether you own or or are a uh, uh, supplier to this uh, website um, yeah um. yeah you know in the early days well early days <laughs> um, you know when these tools started coming out you know um, 10 15 years ago I suppose when they started coming out with checking backlinks and all this kind of crap um i did spend an, an inordinate amount of time looking at competitors backlinks <laughs> and then i realized that this is a complete waste of time right because why am i going to go and chase the same freaking links why why do i want to go and chase these links but there's no point that competitor having exact same as that. And who's to say if that is a fair, up, decent, um, you know, link coming off, uh, you know, a decent site, that they would even entertain um, doing a similar piece of work copy from a competitor who they obviously have built a relationship with because they've already published something and they have a link on their site to yours. Why would they then like, why would they then entertain me pitching it? Like, why would I waste that energy? Um, so the whole thing for me is, you know, I look for my own opportunities. I look what's in the market. I look how we can do things better. The other flip side of this coin here is looking at competitors backlinks. Could also be sending you down a road of absolute rubbish and then if you're not savvy enough you're going to be chasing rubbish and all and who's to say google has discounted those who's to say what they've done in the disavow file like it, do you see what i mean it, it it it's it's all out of whack the thing with internal links is 
I, I've never honestly ever thought about internal linking on a checking internal links on a competitor site. Um, I understand, like I look at a site, I understand where the shortfalls are in terms of, of content and information. And I understand how to interlink it all. Um, and on a yearly basis, we tend to do a recap over the year, depending on what's been created on the site mm -hmm. and adjust that. It's not like a set and forget. Um, because resource, re resources may be added uh, over time and you need to readjust things. So looking at, an, uh, at a competitor, like, yeah, I just, I just like personally for me, that would be an inordinate waste of time for me and for my clients. And I would be billing them for that. And I, I just, I just wouldn't even want to do that. And it's the air of the conscience. <laughs> well, I think he's just about conscious, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, number six on our run list uh, it's from tim brownson and uh, it's titled large file size um tim said i've recorded a blog post and inserted the audio at the start using the audio block option in, in gutenberg um the file is 30 megabyte and i'm wondering if this will impact the seo of the page either negatively because of a large file size or positively by adding different media. Thanks in advance, people. It's uh, constructive to have a look at uh, Michael Martinez's answer on this one. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, Michael's, yeah, got that right. Yeah. I think we can say that's covered. Um, let's go to the next. It's Dylan Logue and it's titled Advice to Someone Brand New to SEO, a Search Engine Optimization. Uh, the, the first piece of advice uh, to someone. Um, Michael Martin has said that remember that there are no industry standards in search engine optimization. Um, yeah no it's true look uh okay um i would first off get the basics down like you know google's guide moz white spot they've all done a basic guide an introduction to it right so get that down now i'm guessing you're not were if you're brand new to seo you're not working client side okay so i'm, I'm guessing maybe you're in in-house or something um or i don't know you haven't quite explained um or it could just be you've just created your own site and now you're going to start working on your own seo so in in in, in all instances read the, read the things sign up to or sign up to a couple of newsletters or just follow a couple of the channels um because there's no one thing and what you must also remember is that there are hundreds and different theories billions of different theories out there one thing which you know you, you, you got to understand uh, there's and i've mentioned this so many times because i think it's so crucial for people to understand matt cuts was asked why i think one guy had dropped from position two to position from position one and had been replaced to position one and this guy had come to webmaster forums and said why and matt basically said it would take me a team of engineers over six months to re-engineer and reverse engineer the algorithms to possibly come up with an answer right on why one dropped what i'm saying to you is nobody freaking understands algos outside of google okay and even then having a little bit of insight into google even they don't freaking understand okay 
there's a lot of teams which are kept completely separate you know uh, literally locked in a dungeon completely isolated from other parts of google right um which are you know the sensitive compartmentalized those people aren't let out of the dungeon like the ones you see former employee of google they they never they never the they never the people that you know they were part of the quality or the web team or but that you know they may have some kind of idea but nobody you know you know what i mean so you also need to test and understand but just read proper stuff don't go to the black hat things don't think about how i'm gonna you know chuck this stuff on how am i going to make something quick i'll rank my thing in six easy steps just stay away from that stuff right put Anything yourself on says, sorry <laughs> yeah yeah just put yourself out there onto you know some couple of reputable sources and just follow stuff you know it's never ending it absolutely never ends and i will occasionally check out a slideshow from someone that's gone and done a presentation or a talk back in my mind i'll go oh fuck no i've tried that like five years ago it's a load of crap or i'd be like hello a second hello 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 i can use that a little bit and i can do that with that that i've been trying to mess with and let's mess with it let's test it let's test see what happens and a lot of times i cock things up and you just reverse it before the client notices <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing you don't know until you start playing around because i tell you what if you're working if you're going client side you may be working with various niches and one thing that something that works on one of my taxi guys right and works really well utterly and completely will suck with one of my crypto guys or with one of my gym guys right everything you do is based upon that business and that's in the last thing i'm going to say now is understand who you're working for what that business's needs are rather than i must rank for yeah because there's a loads out of the way of bringing in traffic that converts rather than thinking i need to just rank for this keyword and everything will be happy at the end of the day i say that um seo can be simplified into three steps understand the business understand what you're trying to do here um are you trying to sell more green widgets are you trying to build a, a database of people who are interested in playing hopscotch whatever it might be um then make sure that the website is actually working reasonably well um make sure it's spiderable make sure it's fast make sure it works on mobile because most people will be looking at it on mobile and then get doing your content so once you once you've got a, a reasonably good canvas your your website um then you can start on your content and then spend a bloody lot of effort writing good content creating good content um, that, that's seo there's lots of lots of bits and pieces you can do and i've got someone at the door so i'm going to shut up mm -hmm. okay any anybody else all right let's um, go to number seven um what is the best practice for bulky outdated content in a blog post uh, that's a question that is asked by abdullah umbaki um and it's titled the best practice for bulky outdated content in the blog post um and what about an entire outdated post Michael Martinez, um, just he does so much uh, and contributes so much to WCA questions. Um, he said, I would either rewrite or replace an entire outdated post. As for uh, posts that are partially out of that, I normally just revise the portions that need to be updated 
Either way, you may decide to rewrite titles and other optimization hot points just to stay on top of uh, contemporary search trends. People um, change their queries over time, and the way people search for content 10 to 20 years ago was very different uh, from uh, how they search today. Yeah, I think, I mean, is it outdated but still valuable? Does it still make sense? Does it does it still have relevance to something? I mean, if something is out of date, and if you have a new article on the same topic, for instance, then you might want to put a, a note at the top of that piece saying, you know, for an updated version of this page, please visit this new page. Um, sometimes outdated things do have value um, as, if you like, historical document. For some people, it is important to know what things were like before um, so that they can track, for instance, the evolution of things, how things changed. So for those people, you know, um, an updated page is of less value, paradoxically speaking. So it depends on what it is. It depends on what it's about. But if it's an article format, for instance, and if you have written a new piece, then I would put the new piece on a separate place and then link it you know, from the top saying, you know, if you want up-to-date version of this content, please read it at this new place. You know, this is an archived version of this article. And you know, it was accurate as of you know, 2010, for instance. That's how I personally would do in most cases. Excellent. OK, if nobody objects, so I'm going to go to number yeah. one. Yes, go yeah, ahead. totally. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you, and also even search engines sometimes just, I'll give you a bloody prime example here. Yeah? um uh 2019 when i started working with uh some gym clients and we just wanted to get the whole london thing where the location was down so it was like okay so we did um fitness events fun fitness events in london the 2019 <laughs> articles was ranking all the way through <laughs> Till, till like this year and I was like and I did a 2020 article and then as much as I said right in the very first thing um uh, you know in a little thing updated version you know updated for 2022 see here updated you know and things like that and for three years Google refused to show any of the 20 the, the, the relevant years content so so yeah even you know like sometimes even updating you know what i mean it's just like no matter what you do google just wants to show the the the, the one that they thought was the better one that just been sitting there for like three years but yeah so publish them separately and then just add you know a view 2020s view 2022s um yeah so that's the way i do it with them now Thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, go to number eight. Um, for those uh, SEO agencies slash freelancers, are there particular niches available that are more suitable, um, brackets, i.e. easier, for beginners uh, about to target clients? It's from Gav Lewis, it's titled Suitable niches for beginners. Um, I think it's way beyond the uh, the stage where there are any simple niches. There have been professionals bashing away at just about every corner of the internet, if uh, the internet indeed has corners. Um, so, yeah, I agree with Michael. Um, start where you know the industry um because a big part of starting off 
an SEO campaign or SEO activity is understanding the business, um, as we talked about earlier. So uh, start from what you know, I would say. Yeah, or on the flip side is bag a client first. Because once you dive in and work in that industry, then you can start promoting yourself as understand that industry and then that becomes your niche like you you made you two or three but then you know that then that becomes your niche um and just focus purely on that um most people i know that work specifically on certain clients that's the way it worked for them they bagged a couple uh they were like yeah okay we understand this now um and these are the ones that they promoted that they worked with on their site and um then that became their niche uh so it's not necessarily picking a niche it's what is going to work with you and plus you've got to enjoy it like there are a couple of industries i flipping hate working with um and there are other ones which which i really like but yeah I also find that it's as much the client as to whether I enjoy working on it. Um, uh, a client who's willing to listen and also to, to engage in sensible debate about whether I'm suggesting something sensible for their, for their business. Um, clients who you simply get on with, you, you, you just, kind of work with and you can get something done and it's enjoyable and you know that that's how you get a lot of good things done it's um and the other thing about niches um and i've come across this a few times in the past you get a um you get a nice juicy client and they're important to you um and you you then get referred to someone else who's not willing to do um not allow not willing to allow you to work for another company in that niche well you've already got a client so you're going to have to say goodbye to them unless they're they're uh unless they're willing to to budge on this not um not working in a niche so you know uh, another one in a niche so you've what will happen is that you will start off as as tim says if you've got a client uh, or a mate or someone who who's a small business a small business that you know um maybe they can't afford to to engage uh, an seo consultant um be serious about it you know don't go and bugger up their site um you know i'm hoping that that as you're at the stage of offering your services, you know what you're doing. You've had some kind of, uh, you've had some kind of experience. Um, so yeah, find find a friend, phone a friend. Um, <laughs> okay. Anybody else? I suppose it just comes down to don't burn your client's site down. Whatever you do. <laughs> yeah, true. All right, um, let's go to number 10. Um, it's Comic Seller. Um, should I use the whole phrase? Hello, everyone. Uh, my question concerns keywords across the website. I run a, a free photo stock. Um, if I want to. Uh, um score higher for nature in google results um should i use the whole phrase um nature free photos or free photos of nature across the page or can i just use the word nature um i add some internal linking and the algorithms are smart enough to match the uh, uh, keyword nature with free photos phrase that's all around the website um nature you don't think that um one 
one word um, like that is going to be a bit tough now uh, for your for your website. Um, it's miles too general. Miles too general. You, you've got to go further down the long tail. But it's, you, you've, at the very least, you should be thinking about nature photos. But nature photos is going to be eye-wateringly difficult as well. You need to be very, very clear about what your business is about. Um, if you've just got some notion that you're going to uh, set up a, a site to get loads of traffic from these and then somehow sell stuff off the back of it, or what, I don't know what you're doing here. What, what's your business about again? Oh, we're back to that question. What are you trying to do? But nature, score higher for nature, forget it. It's... <laughs> There, there are huge sites out there that 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 rank for in the top ten for the word nature. Just not on. Get get real. Really, you're, you're all of these things, free photos and nature in any order that you want to put them. And I've got someone at the door again. Um, I'm going to stop and let Tim say something or someone else. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, given the competitive nature of this, I would probably think of uh, creating multiple longer tail things. So, fine. You can have your thing as nature photos. Then you've got your image, um, the, the, the user clicks on the image, uh, or you can actually then nature photos, but within that it splits out into just, you know, like, I don't know what your nature photos are. Um, close up of bees or something, close up of bees on flowers. And that becomes a subcategory and that's where all your bees with flowers live um field mouse on field mouse you know field mouse and um, on a stalk and that's where those all live um you you're going to need to seriously branch out into more longer tail and more specific for users to be able to find it and potentially to actually appear um, in, 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 you know, be visible in search results because you've got a serious amount of competition. I would look at what kind of photos you have, how can you group them all into longer tail versions, which just are easier to find. Yeah. And as others have said, it's an extremely competitive area. So you know, you're not going to rank for nature. You're not going to even rank for free nature photos. You will have to aim for something more specific than that. One thing you can do, and I would recommend you to do, is that if you're distributing these images on Creative Commons a license, then you mark it up as such. Because if you go to Google Image Search, for instance, you could search, you could narrow down your search to Creative Commons license images. And, you know, that will exclude quite a lot of images that are not marked up or that are under commercial license. So that's an opportunity. It's not going to give you a massive boost, but it's going to give you an edge. Thank you, Mr. Taki. OK, let's rock on to number 11. Um, Mari Sarr asked the question, it's titled, the same keywords in multiple blog posts. She goes on to say, is it negatively 
going to affect my rankings if I have the same keywords in multiple blog posts? For example, let's say I want to rank for marketing company. Naturally, the, the, uh, that keyword will be throughout the site. Not necessarily. Um, is that I have a series of um, keywords that need a ranking boost. Do I create uh, uh, multiple posts using that or just one? Uh, what happens when they naturally overlap? I, I don't know why you would be creating multiple blog posts with mar mar uh, that includes marketing company in it. Like a marketing company would be, I don't know, I mean, you could be doing so many different things online, offline, like uh, an article be within um, five, five ways to get your, five ways to get your online marketing to match your offline marketing uh, efforts. Why would you include marketing company in there? Like you literally, creating an article to help someone understand how to match their online to offline marketing so that they all align completely. Like, why would you create a multiple blog posts on marketing company? It just makes no freaking sense. Your entire site, your brand, the whole thing is a marketing company and then it fits within there. I don't know why you would just want to create more posts about marketing company. I, I don't understand why they would write um the whole thing with marketing and like for a marketing company <laughs> is is to fill that need like you are going to put yourself in front of the user to solve a problem that they have where they perceive you to provide some form of value to their company you're not just going to write crap like 57 ways to mark like how would you even title all these things what your marketing company can do for you 52 ways your marketing company can help you uh nine marketing company like, like how would you even create articles about marketing company like uh, for a marketing company it's like just no it's crazy um yeah, I, I think the I think it's a, it's a line after it. Uh, no, sorry, a couple of lines uh, after it. I have a series of keywords that need a ranking boost. Um, I don't think you need to worry about um, about words, and key phrases happening naturally. That's that's what you need to think about. You know, you might say marketing company, um, but you wouldn't want to fill your your website with it but if you have to say marketing company for some reason in your copy don't worry about it there's there's this this crazy idea um and i might get shot down about this there's this crazy idea of keyword cannibalization and there are there are seo tools out there that tell you which pages are being cannibalized and all this kind of crap I don't think Google's in the slightest bit worried about keyword cannibalization. I think it's something that, if it did exist, doesn't exist anymore. Um, you know, if you have to say the word, you have to say the word. It's it's the way it is. But, you know, try and find alternatives, um, you know. But it's do what's right with the feel of the copy. Um, if, you, if, you want, if you want to rank better for online marketing company or online marketing or i don't know let's let's say online marketing company uh, it's probably an awful um example but let's let's use that then you know then you write something about how how an online marketing company <laughs> will benefit you if you have a uh, a website or something but you 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 need to you need to think about what the content is doing and who it's for, and I notice that Josh Levinson, Josh Levinson says says this in a much more succinct fashion here. As long as you 
you cover different topics or different angles, it it, it will help. But you know, um, the the idea of key, keyword cannibalization, if you can get two or three pages ranking for the uh, for the search, <laughs> all the better. <laughs> You've got two or three times, and then someone clicking on it. I'm sorry, but I'm also going to be a bit of a dick here. But if you're a marketing company and you're asking how to market a marketing company, are you actually selling like what? Like, you, you see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next, and here it comes. Marisa again, um, she said, uh, can they work even if the search volume is zero? She's referring to uh, the uh, existence of, of a keyword, uh, it's descript description. Um, Mari said, I'm trying to use more long tail keywords. Uh, can they work uh, even if the search volume is zero? Um, example of a made up keyword, let's say my site is currently ranking for marketing agency and New Jersey Digital Marketing Agency has zero searches, but uh, people could be searching for it. Should I use it? If my New Jersey uh, audience just types in marketing agency, um, but has a, a history of New Jersey searches, might Google recognize that they are fit? So yeah, so I think what Maureen needs to understand here <laughs> is that if your marketing agency is in New Jersey, right, you're going to have that address in your site. You're possibly going to have that in your title of your header because that's where your location. You probably should also be having your foot in the address next to your copyright, next to how to find us, to get in touch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now you've localized it. Just because someone's searching New Jersey marketing agency, right, there is like zero search volume for it. For one, it doesn't mean it's there. But two, you're forgetting the fact that someone in New Jersey is not going to search New Jersey, right? They are going to search digital marketing agency. The IP address of New Jersey is then got, Google is going to show them New Jersey marketing agencies that they understand are in there. So now we you, you, you bring into the realms of local SEO. Okay. The other flip side is also on a mobile. The mobile will try and show you the closest one to the relevant to the search, right? So that's where your Google My Business comes in. But you need to you need to obviously you have New Jersey in your site. You don't need to create something New Jersey because Google understands where your location is. So you need to put down physically just add in your location into the site, your contact page, what your office address in New Jersey is. My business, if you've got a physical office, that's going to be in New Jersey. That's where your Google My Business is going to be. Your footer of your page, you know, uh, you know, based obviously if you work from home and you don't want your home address, you can just say based in New Jersey. Then you can have a link to your Google My Business thing. Google will understand you in New Jersey. You don't need to add in New Jersey. Like, yeah, and people searching new jersey aren't going to necessarily search new jersey unless they're out of state then they're going to want to search in new jersey that's when they'll type in new jersey but you don't need to type it because just the way search works it use provides you the the the, the, the closest the, the the closest and most relevant to you brilliant Tim. okay i think it's that time again i'm not sure but let me just click this button Yes, it's thank you for watching time. Um, before we go, um, I, I must thank um, David Razan, Tim Kappa, Masataki Wasa um, for your valuable contributions here. And who, who, who am I missing, uh, David? No, I'm sorry. Um, I just told you, you, you know, your names are being said don't worry just let let me get on with it i'll calm down eventually <laughs> i shall uh, take the medication 
anyway we look uh, we'll be back at the same time next week get to do this uh, all again but uh, for now it's um good night